Welcome to The Pulse. That might be the name of this show. I, we don't know yet, but we'd love to hear from you. Is The Pulse a good name? What are we thinking about this, Peggy? I think that it's you know the, the pulse of the mobile net industry. The we got our fingers on the pulse. I think it makes sense, don't you? Yeah, because there's there's so much happening out there, and you have to keep your finger on the pulse. And from various perspectives, not just you know one to to many, but all of us talking to each other, it lends itself really well. I think. Well, we're leaving it up to you guys. We would love to hear. We're going to decide this over the next week. So from this point on until the next episode, you have that much time to let us know if this is something that you want. Wherever this is, leave a comment. Let us know if you think this is uh, the good, a, a good name for this show. And let's talk about this show. My name is Rob Woodbridge. I am from Untether.tv. It's a great site where you can get some great resources where I talk to some of the, the most important people in the mobile industry, including Peggy Ann Saltz right here. Peggy, what, where can, you know, Mobile Groove, people know you, don't they? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing that. I'm seeing that also in a, in a number of um, sort of new followers on Twitter and the social media from different areas. You know, from M Health, I was talking to a woman yesterday from Emerging Markets. She's doing usability there, and she says, you know, wow, you know, we love you because you're going to bring these topics to the head that no one else is talking about. I said, yeah, wait till I tell you about this new video show, and I told her all about it. Her name's Susan Drain. She's lining up people right now for one of our episodes, which will look at emerging markets. So that's really awesome. I love it. Um, I love it. Yeah. Um, me, Peggy Ann Saltz, yes, writer, analyst, observer. I'd like to also think, you know, mobile passionate. Um, I really get into the industry. I've been doing it for 15 plus years. Mobile since day one when it started. And um, have mobile groove which is the site that has the analysis and the resources, the books, everything I write. We talked about Net Size Guide last time. I've got another book coming this year. Um, yeah, and providing what I hope is um, uh, knowledge sharing and resources for the industry. That's what I'll, I'll call the trap, the strap line in the future. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. And I can. I mean, this is this is our second episode, or really our first really official episode. We 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 did one mm -hmm. before Christmas to give this a test to see if we could do this, see how we work together, and. Um, you know, I, I think it's stuck. So we're we're going to do a second episode. Oh, I love absolutely! It. Keep going for the year. At most, least most podcasts, most uh, most shows disappear after the first episode. But this one, we're going to get through the second. And, and th this is we we've come up with a structure for the show, which is great. For those of you who watched the first one, you'll be happy to know that we now actually have a structure. And uh, <laughs> we have we got themes, and that's the focus of this. And and today is one of the the very first shows where we're going to be doing this. But we've got themes, and each month we're going to bring in experts on that theme. So if we do four shows in a month, this is a weekly, we're going to have four experts talking about the same theme, different vantage points, different perspectives. My hope is different countries, mm -hmm. different nations talking about the same theme to get a global perspective of what's really going on out there in the mobile space. And I'm and, uh, really excited about that. So we'll be doing this um, really 10 themes. So the, the, the big themes will start in February for us, and they will end in November. And then January and December, so we're in January now, will be kind of the projections, the trends, the go-forward things. Some of the biggest experts in the space coming on the show to talk to us about the trends they see in the mobile industry. And then in December, having another group of experts look back on the year and say, this is, this is really what uh, the significant impact that mobile's had on this year. So bookends. Mm -hmm. 10 months of great content. We're hoping to get every week a great show out with a great guest. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, and and, and great topics in between. I've been uh, brainstorming quite a couple. I mean, there's the obvious ones. There's the payment, the commerce, you know, the rock stars of 2012. We yeah. all know this is going to be, you know, the year of commerce. But um, as you said, different countries, different regions. Um, I'm thinking a lot having it happening in Africa. I just saw the other day there was... Uh, a post that uh, Nigeria rocks when it comes to the use of mobile internet yeah. in Africa. Uh, it's ahead of the you know it's ahead of the crowd. I think that's you know that is a show right there. Give me you know an overview of Nigeria, mobile marketing, mobile apps, the whole the whole thing and everything in between. I love it, and and I think that that's we 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 talked uh, uh, we talk a lot about this. I think the industry does is that uh, we think that we're innovating in North America, but what we are doing are slightly lagging behind, and I, I use that sarcastically. Uh, from some of the developing nations that you know use this infrastructure, the mobile infrastructure, every day, because it is their connectivity. It is the way that they connect to the world. They do their banking, and it's it's old hat, just the same way as that we browse the web. So we have to break. That's our maybe that should be our goal. We have to break habits here, mm -hmm. desk bound 
habits here and move you guys into the mobile space. So we're going to bring those stories. I can't wait. I can't wait. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be great. And the, the thing about the show as well is that um, we're going to we're going to start a conversation like this. We're going to bring up some topics around the things that we think in the past week were the most significant story. We're going to limit it to one story each. The things that had the influence that influenced us this past week. We're going to bring in a guest, uh, yeah. and then. We're going to finish it off with raising our goblet of rock. That has not lost left the show. We are keeping that. Well, because it does rock. <laughs> exactly. The goblet of rock. And so uh, uh, today, um, our guest is going to be uh, Gary Schwartz, who is uh, the author of The Impulse Economy. Uh, it's a new book that just came, to, came out about talking about uh, mobile and mobile commerce, transaction payments, and a bunch of stuff around that. He's also the chair, North American chair of the uh, MEF, of the MEF. And he's also the CEO of Impact Mobile, which is a company based here in, uh, well, in Canada, in Toronto, and uh, in New York City. So he'll be on in a little while. Gary's a great guy. Uh, we could just ask him one question. He will talk the rest of the way because he is so insightful, and energetic, and enthusiastic about the mobile space. I can't wait to get to him. But no, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to have to wait. So why don't we jump right into um, some of this, the story that you... Yeah, I mean, you've been working on an article for quite some time, for for a bunch of days, and it is a very significant story. What what was the story this week that that really grabbed your attention? Well, this time, as you mentioned, you know, you said we're going to be looking beyond the U.S. to yes. what's going on in other countries. This is interesting because this is one time where Europe's looking to the U.S. to say, "Wow, this is what's coming." So we're all sort of wondering about and bracing ourselves for. Um, the increased impact, you know, the rise and rise of tablets, because this is, you know, very mobile, sophisticated uh, region to begin with. So, the rise of tablets, but specifically the advance of Kindle Fire. So, I've been looking at that, um, trying to get beyond the numbers. You know, I listed in a recent post, it'll be going on live at Mobile Groove. I tried to get together some of the analyst numbers because Amazon says it sold a million a week. That's Amazon's numbers. Um, we don't have a breakdown of, you know, is that Kindle? plain, so to speak, or Kindle Fire. Um, so beyond that, also to understand, well, you know, if it is really, literally um, setting the industry on fire and burning up some iPad sales in the process, then uh, what is the impact? So um, for developers, I have a guest columnist on the site from Moobaloo, um, and uh, his column looks at, says, well, you know, for developers, get ready because the, you know, the Google mobile services you were used to using in your apps, they're not going to work on Kindle, so you have to rethink that one. Uh, not a big headache. It's no reason to hold up innovation and work. It's just to keep it in mind that when you're telling your clients or you're thinking yourself about what apps you're going to be using or rather creating for these devices, keep in mind that if you thought sort of Android and um, you know, other operating systems, iOS and others, was a headache on mobile, tablets are going to be repeat. So yeah, exactly. that's one thing. We've got developers, you know, just deal with it. It's reality. Deal with it. Um, interestingly, also will be the potential impact on mobile marketing, which I think is going to mark a really seismic shift. I don't think that's an exaggeration because, first of all, people out there such as, you know, Greg Stewart over at the MMA, Mobile Marketing Association, he says tablets overall are going to have a huge impact on mobile marketing because you're going to think about it. You're going to think about mobile as being another device on top. So it's mobile. Is it mobile smartphones? Is it tablets? What kind of a, what kind of a device is a tablet? And so keeping that in mind, um, also taking a look at the numbers, what do we have about the impact on mobile marketing, mobile advertising so far? And the only numbers to this point come from Millennial Media because they have this, you know, they do a report a month, the mobile mix, all about what are they seeing across their ad impressions, ad impressions on their network, um, and to give us an idea of devices, operating systems, that sort of thing. And there again we see that Kindle is just literally on fire in the U.S. market um, with ad impressions there growing 19%. Uh, Average 19% on a daily basis. So you've got this, you know, this rise and rise of Kindle over there. What's going to happen in Europe? Are we going to see the same rise and rise? Well, tough one to call. But if you take a look at all of the research, um, stars are aligned for that type of thing. And I'll just interject one other point: is um, I'm always on interested in the consumer, you know, us, the people. I'm I'm the people person here. And uh, there, looking at some orange research on the topic. Um, 
they're also telling us that you know our habits in Europe. The this the research looks at the UK, um, Spain, Poland, France. There I got it. Could win a quiz show on that one. Um, just thinking off the top of my head. Yeah, UK. Yeah, those are the countries. And uh, there again, we're using the tablet. We're embracing the tablet as sort of our um, uh, complement to smartphone. Uh, or rather, smartphones a complement to TV. So we're still we're still using mobile devices, but our tablet is sort of the next device we're reaching to more than potentially the PC. So is it a replacement for PC? I can't say for sure, but it is certainly one of these sit back and relax devices that we're using for research, commerce, um, what we used to do on the PC. So add it all together and. Uh, it's it's braced you know it is all ready and set to be a mega trend in Europe once it launches you, you know and it, and it and it's so clear that um you know that it, it already has begun um mm. because of the transition that's happening even in in our consumption patterns of or the way that we consume data uh, from a mobile device and and it's funny because this will my my big story of the week will complement exactly what you're talking about here, and it'll add fire to the fire, really, quite frankly. <laughs> um, it, it is it's a uh, a com score and a flurry uh, report that came out that talked about the the number of minutes that the average um, person uses a mobile app versus a web browser, so surfing the web in a day. And it, this is for for pretty incredible. We we typically, according to this research, we use we use this data or we use apps 94 minutes a day. That's our engagement rate. 94 minutes a day. Now that can be, my guess is he heavy on the social side, on the Twitter, on the Facebook, on the email side, probably the browser, the mobile browser as well. But that's uh, compared to 72 minutes uh, per day on the browser. And this is that's the lowest it's been since uh, June of 2010 for the browser. It's the highest it's been, obviously, for mobile apps. It's an incredible number. And I think that really does play well into what Amazon is doing with with the Fire, what a lot of companies are doing with this app economy. Um, and, and I think that it, it just kind of fuels a speculation or that conversation around, is it mobile web versus, or is it web versus apps? Is it mobile web versus apps? Is it HTML5? Is it native apps? And I think that this conversation is going to be going on for quite some time. But those statistics are pretty staggering. 94 minutes a day. 94 minutes a day in small bite-sized interactions too, right? We're not sitting there for hours. You don't sit there for 25 minutes or 35 minutes using your Facebook app, but it's how many times a day does it take for you to get to that 94 minutes? It's pretty incredible. That's a, those are, that's a staggering stat to me. What's interesting in the Kindle research from, from Orange is that they concluded the tablet device, this new category of, of product, is... Um, Contrary to the smartphone, which is about killing time, you know, you're doing something, particularly in Europe, you're waiting for a train, which we all are at all times, it's commuting uh, public rather than in the U.S., so there's more time to hang out and literally kill time waiting for planes and trains and all the rest. Yeah. So it's a kill time device, and the tablet has emerged as a saving time device, and I think that's interesting. So it's going to be an efficiency device, it's going to be a device we use I mean, I've concluded in my post that um, you know it's going to be the device that also, um, like the mobile phone, but in a different user, um, you know, in a different user scenario, uh, accompanies us throughout our consumer journey. So it's the awareness, you know, it's finding out what products we want, researching them, um, comparing them, talking to our friends about them. You know, you yeah. talked about social media on the apps, and I talk about social shopping as being pretty cool to watch too. You know. It's, Shopping is a social event. Look what I just bought. It's on a YouTube video. It is. Uh, it so, is. Um, you know, I, I see that it could be a tremendous boost. I mean, it does definitely, if you're, if you're a brand or an agency or you're someone who has to think strategy, you have to, figure, you, have to, you have to factor this device into your strategy. And um, moreover, if you're thinking about commerce, um, you know, this is what's going to boost commerce and ultimately transactions. Absolutely. I think what Amazon, what we're seeing with Amazon, especially the Kindle Fire, is the reinvention of the store window. And uh, ultimately, mm -hmm. they're, they're leading the way that. Well, those are the, those are the two stories that, that we think. That, I mean, it's, it's amazing that they actually coincide with each other, that they complement each other. But uh, that will not bro. happen again. I think that's <laughs> beginner's luck. Shall we put it down to beginner's luck? Right, that's my guess. Um, but I think that uh, um, what I'm really excited about is, is jumping into our conversation with Gary. He's, he's waiting. Um, and we'll bring him in here in a second. And a little context for, for this month's uh, uh, series of interviews. And we've got three great, knowledgeable guys on this space. And I can't wait. And we are going to look at, there's a, a, 
I, there's an incredible number of um, of you know trends and forward thinking uh, articles that came out at the end of the year, at the beginning of this year for uh, for mobile and what's in store for mobile, the trends of 2012. So we decided to reach out and grab three guys who did this, who wrote this. Uh, this week we're talking to, as I said, Gary Schwartz, who is the author of the Impulse Economy. Go buy the book. Um, mm -hmm. We're all, next week we're gonna uh, we're gonna sit down with uh, Chet and Sharma. Uh, from Chet and Charma Consulting, which will be a great, great, great show. I can't wait for that. And, yeah. and the week after that, uh, Kevin Tofel from Gigome will be here to talk about his predictions as well. So jam-packed, three, I, I can't imagine, three better guests to start this off with. And uh, why don't we just jump into it with Gary? We'll bring him in and, and get him to start talking about what he is looking forward to in 2012. Sound good? Great. Bring him uh, on. We'll bring him on. Here he is. We are here with Gary Schwartz. Uh, Gary, one of my favorite guys when it comes, just on, I think on the planet, uh, but very, 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 uh, you know, the preeminent guy when it, when it comes to talking about what's going on in the mobile industry, uh, you know, across the board. Gary Schwartz is the uh, author of The Impulse Economy. It's a great video that I did with uh, with Gary when we were at MEF Americas on, about The Impulse Economy, about his book. Go check it out on, on Tether.tv. He's also the CEO of Impact Mobile. Gary, uh, really appreciate Coming on, our first guest, new show. It's called The Pulse, and mm -hmm. uh, we're going to talk about the trends that you see happening in 2012 in the mobile industry. But first... Oh, thank you for having me. Well, first, talk about yourself. Give us the spiel. Well, I think you did a good job there. Um, I'm The only other hat I have is I'm chair of, of Meth, Meth North America, and my remit, especially for 2012, is, is M Commerce and, and um, driving adoption. On, on the payment channel, on the phone. So the, the big things that I'd be working on in 2012 is, is mobile security and privacy in, in North America, which are impediments big. to adoption, whether hyped or real. And, uh, you know, continue to write, got a blog, uh, The Impulse Economy. Uh, so uh, we'll continue to, to write where my book left off. I love it. Yeah, that's right, because books breathe now, don't they? they it, you don't just put them in a, you know, bind your mm -hmm. books and then send them on their way. Uh, what's that called? Uh, set and forget? You don't do that with books anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, a, a book is, is sort of like the first date, and then you got to continue. You got <laughs> to continue right. to. You know, got to continue like all the way to marriage. Yeah, but it's a terrible first date, isn't it? Uh, you know what? It's it's it, it's a credible first date. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you lay the groundwork. Exactly. Well, uh, you know, you did. Uh, I love it. Less than I think, just around a hundred words. You did uh, the kind of your predictions for twenty twelve in the mobile space, and uh, and and I'd like to go through that. But also, what you what you didn't write, the things that you see that you didn't write that are that are coming down the road as well. That uh, you know, in a very short period of time, into January, between you writing the article and this, we we've started to see emerge as as mega trends that are happening in the mobile space. So Absolutely. we're going to pepper you with questions if that's okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's right. go. Let's do it. Well, uh, you know, maybe maybe I'll start with the very first question, which is um, when you when you just kind of project out to 2012, what what is the biggest prevailing trend? You've got you, we've got the 10 here, but is there mm -hmm. something that that you just see that uh, either in those 10 or not in those 10 that you see that are just going to be uh, we're we're cruising towards? Well, you know, it's it's interesting because what I think is interesting and, and what the media and folk generally in the population thinks are you know, interesting are maybe two different things. Um, it's interesting because I do a lot of radio interviews now, and and so you do a pitch for radio, and and it's interesting what they pick up yeah. and what they what they want to speak about is how the phone is going to drive tonnage revenue, how it's going to reinvigorate the economy. So all the things that that are 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 going to be you know positive outcomes of all the kerfuffle we have in the mobile space. Yeah. That's what they want to talk about. And it is the most interesting because, you know, mobile is one of those things, that, as we all know, that is horizontally disrupting so many medias. I just came out with, a, with um, an article yesterday on, on Bonds & Noble and right. how, you know, Bonds & Noble is the canary of the mall. And, uh, <laughs> and it's, it's sort of slow exit into um, household, you know, uh, paraphernalia in addition to trying to sell books yep. um, is, is indicative of, of the way the mall is going. And, uh, you know, I, I think the biggest prediction that I would have is that devices, hybrid devices, which aren't handhelds and they're not tablets, but they sort of, you know, the Amazon Kindles of the world that, that have larger screen functionality, but, but not, not as much of a clum clumsy portability, but actually are mobile. Yep. Um, those are the things that are really going to disrupt the mall because what they're doing is they're bringing the cloud, 
which was politely living at home, they, bl they bring in the cloud right into the mall. So in, instead of having handhelds that you can do sort of nose to screen mobile shopping comparison on, now you have a device which is built as a commerce enabler for shoppers. So the Amazon Kindle Fire right now is, is, is a Wi-Fi device, yep. which is just a, you know, a, you know, basically a, a, a little trial into the market as far as I'm concerned. They're going to come out with, with a, you know, a, a 4G device at some point, and that's really going to decimate them all. I mean, if you think the, the price check app from Amazon has created um, a little bit of a guffuffle, you, when Amazon Kindle comes in with 4G and potentially with a scanner in front of it, Right. Then we th then we've got troubles. Then it's over. So that, that I mean I think we just talked about that and, and Peggy uh, this article that Peggy's been researching and, and we'll put up on mobilegroove.com uh, kind kind of echoes that clearly, doesn't it? And but from a European perspective, that this is not just a North American uh, piece. Yeah. This is this is happening around the world, right, Peggy? Absolutely, absolutely. And Amazon is is uh, a nemesis to a, a lot of folk out there right now. Yeah, maybe maybe the street vendor in uh, Calcutta. Is the is is safe for now from Amazon? For now, yeah. For <laughs> now he's okay. He's okay. We're all going to be down to that. Uh, I mean, I think that's a very significant uh, significant piece. Uh, Pe Peggy, is there anything you want you need to clarify on that? Um, no, I just thought that since we're talking so much about you know the the mall and the transaction that experience. I mean, the other part of what you're doing, and also the other part of your uh, predictions for 2012, are also about the other side of the coin which is the security I mean it, okay we're going to be using this to research our pro our purchases and research the products we're going to consider in that right. purchase funnel from you know awareness all the way down to commerce how are things looking for that you know for that quote unquote last mile <laughs> or right. whatever well, it, you call it. It, so so in in you know black friday and 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 christmas season for uh, you know 2011 the phone was ostensibly used as a comparison tool to help you in the shop, shop more effectively. What is going to happen is that that checkout process, um, is, the consumer is going to become more, more comfortable with that checkout process for a number of reasons. One, as you indicate, um, there are going to be security standards coming out. There's going to be a little bit more confidence um, coming into the market that your phone uh, is is a device that can be used for larger purchases, not just micro purchases, and um, and you know what I call hyped issues like privacy will I think continue to be um, an issue, but people will put boxes around it, and, and and I think there'll be a bit of a comfort zone. So so where you're going to see a, a lot more activity on the payment side is with cloud-based checkout, and and mm -hmm. so. You, you, you basically, you know, continue the conversation of Amazon, you, you're going to get a lot of people who are price checking and then deciding that they, they're going to, you know, go through and buy that product in the cloud. And that cloud is going to live, that checkout cloud is going to live right in the store. And, and that's going to be a big difference. So V.me um, with Visa, um, you know, Building Revolution, uh, there are a whole slew of one-click checkouts um, that are entering the market that are optimized for the small screen experience, that cloud-based checkout um, will grow substantially in 2012. Proximity checkout, I, I, I think we, we've got another two years of predictions before we hit, you know, actually tap and pay, um, at least mm -hmm. in North America. I think there are huge barriers to adoption there. And I think that even the guys involved, like Google, they're playing in that space, but really their, their, their heart is in the cloud. Mm -hmm. so, so on, on the security side, um, uh, there, there needs to, the, the industry needs, as it develops and matures, it, it needs to come up with standards. Uh, we came up with standards online with PCI compliance. Uh, organizations in the U.S. like x9.org uh, worked on recommendations. Those recommendations were adopted by ISO um, globally. And then those, those standards were audited against, which became PCI compliant. Um, what, what's happening now is that X9 is going back to the table. They have a five-year cycle uh, on payment, and they, they revisit what payment means. They're, going, they're looking at mobile right now. By the end of this year, they'll have recommendations um, in draft form for mobile. I'm working with MEF 
to, to, to work with that organization to understand all the different business aspects of mobile so that, that they have an insight into all the different payment opportunities on the mobile device. And they're going to come up with those standards for mobile, which will really help not just the consumer, because the consumer really doesn't isn't involved in the nitty gritty of the security, but it'll help the shopkeeper, it'll help everybody in the value chain understand where they play, and there'll be a confidence um, infused across the industry, which will permeate down to the shopper. Yeah, and and that's got to happen obviously before we we move forward. It happened in the web world. It happened, you know, and this is something that that. Um, you know, I think that people were getting very excited about NFC and contactless payments, um, but it, this has to be in place in order for that to feel, pe consumers to feel comfortable. Obviously, these are the building blocks, yeah. um, and and as as we you know, you know, mobile is so new, and, and from a payment perspective, we're still you know embryonic, really. Uh, you know, we have micro payments, and we came from a, a ringtone economy to get to the point where I'm spending this on a uh, you know, $100 item and up uh, is, is a big step for a consumer. And, and it, it will happen, uh, but uh, you know, 2012 will, will still be a trial bed for that. Do you have any views on, because you know, we had this discussion before, but we said, oh, we can't figure this one out because we haven't figured out the value chain. Value chain is in flux. Is it the banks? Is it the credit card companies? Is it the other payment mechanisms? Is it the operator? Um, are we just going to just move ahead with this simply because the momentum is there and people want to literally shop till they drop using mobile <laughs> connected devices and we're just right. going to let it figure itself out? Is that pretty much it? Well, you know what? It's it's one of those things where it, it, it's 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 not a pretty uh, you know value chain. Uh, everybody's uh, you know this is a, a make or break for a lot of the players in the value chain to play a role. And so mm -hmm. the, the carriers know that if they don't proactively engage and, and try to be, you know, the, the, uh, um, the, the secure element for all this stuff or um, if, if Google doesn't make a play and, and uh, you know, try to drive adoption on its wallet, that they're going to be a, a peripheral player. And so uh, there, there's a skirmish. Um, you're finding 2012 is going to be a, 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 a real battleground for positioning. And... Um, and, and really, the, the shopper isn't going to play a role. Uh, the, 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 uh, everybody in the value chain outside of the guys who want to own the wallet relationship or the secure element relationship, the credentials relationship, mm -hmm. everybody else is, is just going to be a peanut gallery. Uh, the, 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 the action is going to happen with the, the carriers uh, uh, you know, the, the, um, who, who want to own the secure element. Uh, it's it's going to be the guys who, who want to play a, a role in, 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 in wallet ownership. Uh, when that dust settles in 2013, then you'll start to see uh, the, 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 the shoppers uh, potentially adopting the winning wallets. And they're going to be multiple wallets, there's no question. Um, but 2012, it's going to be just pilot and a lot of folk like us talking about it rather than you know, taking out your wallet and tapping and paying. Last question here, Gary. Uh, we talk about uh, hardware and manufacturers. One of your predictions, uh, a couple of your predictions, uh, are focused around Apple, RIM, Microsoft, and Nokia. Sure. Um, so you know, a couple of guys have momentum. Some some have stalled. Uh, I mean, is this is hardware uh, still relevant around this? Is uh, you know, is, is the BlackBerry still relevant? What 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 does twenty twelve yeah, look well, like for that? Hardware hardware is um, is an interesting thing. Apple's changed the way we look at hardware. Hardware is about content now, and uh, Apple sold its hardware based on yes, the fact that it's a beautiful device, mm -hmm. no question. The fact that it's ergonomically sound and it has a great browser and all these things, no question. But the reason that Apple has been so successful is it sold its device based on the fact that if you have its device, you get all this content. Yeah. So it, it, all its marketing was around. Look how many apps you'll get with, the, with, with your device. Look how much content you'll get. And it really hoodwinked the content industry to build a huge amount of stuff for its, um, its storefront and use that to sell its phone. Why that's so important in hardware is because the content is, uh, is, is basically locked to that OS and you can't port it across to another OS, they know that they have a loyalist community by default because there's no way in the world I'm going to pay again for those games and that content on a droid or uh, to move it across to 
you know, Microsoft. So Microsoft's big announcement this year is they, got, they hit 50,000 apps yeah. in their storefront, which is great for the time that they've been gunning it. But the reality is the consumer looks at this and says, I'm going to get this device, which actually is, you know, the devices are sound and the OS is sound, but it doesn't come with that sticky content. Yeah. And so it's a really, it's, it's a two horse race. It's, um, it's Apple and, 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 uh, and obviously um, Android. And the reason is, is because they have these, the communities of content that they can play with. And, um, and, and so in this two horse race, uh, you're going to have a third player. The, the third one used to be, obviously, um, BlackBerry. Uh, obviously, you know, we've seen that, that they had a hard year. Uh, yeah. No secrets there. Um, I, I, I don't know if they can salvage it, to be honest, uh, even with, you know, the, 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 the playbook not actually being a bad device. I think it's an amazing tablet. Um, and, and, and with the new OS, maybe they can salvage some credibility. But, but really... I think that they're they're going to be pushed out, and third place is going to be filled by probably uh, a Nokia, um, a Microsoft position. But still, third place is is way so back from the two horse pack. Yeah. So, and that doesn't change in 2012. Doesn't change. No, no. Uh, it's it's a it's a two horse race. Um, w what's going to change um, is that a lot more companies going to be bought for IP. There are going to be a lot more uh, lawsuits. Um, uh, whether Apple starts licensing uh, its, its um, technology or continues to be adversarial is a question mark. Um, if they don't, uh, it, it's not going to bode well for the growth of the mobile industry. Yeah, I think that that's something that... Um I think that that's something that we're, we're definitely seeing, and, and uh, you know, I think this is going to be a litigious year, a threatening year for li uh, litigation around patents. We've seen this patent war happening, and and uh, hopefully all that gets behind us, and we can move right into the innovation side. Obviously, yeah, I uh, no? optimistic. I I, I mean, uh, Starbucks just got sued. Uh, you know, uh, up the gazoo, we we have uh, lawsuits <laughs> probably on a weekly basis yeah. uh, right through uh, uh, 2012. Yeah, it's crazy. Peggy, last question goes to you. Okay, I'll, I'll just um, wrap up with uh, trying to match your trends against real companies or real initiatives out there. So if we say, um, you know, I'm looking at your your list right now, looking down at you know, um, uh, Apple says uh, I do to NFC, Room mm -hmm. Exit Stage Right, Cloud Checkout, etc. If those are the trends, can you just a couple of Companies on the top of your radar that sort of fit in here and will, um, you know, either benefit or at least are positioned to uh, take advantage of this. Well, I, I, as I indicated, I, I think NFC is. I mean, it's going to be a year for talking about NFC. I think that mm -hmm. the opportunity is with the launch of NFC and, and the, the push for NFC phones in 2012. Um, the, the opportunity for companies to come in and, and leverage that install base as it grows are probably not out of the gate the payment companies uh, just because as you mentioned it's a fragmented uh, market it's difficult to 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 implement that in 2012 and get all the stakeholders in place to to tap and and, and check out um, I think proximity marketing is an opportunity for a lot of companies out there to leverage that install base for frictionless tap at retail to opt-in to to get a, a relationship uh, at POP um, I, I, you know I, I think that it's an opportunity for the market to move away from content on the app storefront and that frog fragmented storefront, not for immersive games because that's still the domain of apps, but for simple, uh, you know, storefronts um, and and simple utilities. Hopefully, the industry sees the light and we move into the super app being the mobile browser uh, with HTML5. Mm -hmm. I hope that that's the trend because that's really going to help um, move the economy uh, uh, and the marketing economy. Forward. Um, so, uh, so any uh, any super companies, Gary? Any you know, like if you had, tell me the top three. Not to say we're gonna give investment tips here or something. Right. That's not the point. But just to get well, an idea, on, you know, it might be a great year for couponing it. companies. If we take your point about uh, you know that proximity thing, I'm just trying to get an idea of like the the niches to be looking at. Right, right. Well, it, you know, with, with, with proximity marketing, I think uh, they're, 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 you know, it, it's, it's a great opportunity to, to, to grow and, 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 and play with NFC as a proximity marketing tool. I don't think any companies are going to make money on proximity marketing uh, in 2012. But, but like most things, you don't have to make money. 
uh, to do well uh, from a corp dev uh, front. You just have to have lots of hype and, and it, it, um, it, there's probably not much money in proximity marketing, but there'll be lots of trial. And as we know, you don't necessarily have to um, uh, drive a revenue uh, to, to, to drive value uh, for your company. There, if, if you can make a positioning statement in the market, there are lots of uh, big boys out there that would like to uh, take advantage of, of proximity companies that, that, that hit the right note in the marketplace. Um, the only other thing that I, I would indicate is that um, we didn't touch on uh, LTE and 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 broad, uh, you know the the bandwidth that right. is going to be required for all this content mm -hmm. and and I think that that's one of the big sort of that's the elephant in the room is we talk about content we talk about all this fun stuff you go to CSE uh, C, uh, CES and and you see all this fun content yep. the reality is is that it all has to ride on on rails and um, if if you don't have the bandwidth for this content the promise that we've made to the consumer can't be fulfilled. So you have all these hardware guys out there and, 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 and these, these, these software guys out there that are promising the world to the consumer because that's how they sell their product and their service. The reality is the carriers do not have the capacity to fulfill on the promise. And so I think Spectrum continues to be a big problem in 2012 and going into 2013. I think spectrum war, wars will continue and, and it's probably going to be much more of an issue than anything to do with content and hardware long term. Uh, you can build an LTE network, you can make it fast, you can increase the bandwidth. There is never enough bandwidth. Go to LA and look at the highways. You can put another lane on the highway, it will be full the next day. Yeah. The reality is the, more, the, the wider the road, the more we fill it, we have to start thinking intelligently about the way we provide content to a mobile consumer. I love it. We're going to leave you at that, Gary. I know you got to run. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. You can find Gary at uh, theimpulseeconomy.com or impactmobile.com. Anywhere else, Gary, that we, we should drive people to? Well, the, my, my, my microblog Twitter is Impulse Economy. Yep. And um, I, I tweet seven times a day. Please follow me. <laughs> Gary, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, talk about uh, you know getting lost in time. When I when I sit and talk to Gary, I, I I probably do it all day just listening listening to the guy. I've seen him speak a number of times. Read his book, obviously. I had him on a couple of times uh, to on Tether TV. Done some live interviews with a guy, and every time I sit with him, I learn something from him. I just I love the enthusiasm. He's a great ambassador for mm. this industry. Boy, boy, I can't say much. And about and that. very very straightforward, no nonsense, right on it. I mean, we know exactly what he's thinking, where the battlefields are going to be, and where the opportunities are going to be, too, which would um, bring me to ask you a question for a change, because uh, <laughs> now that we have our format, we sort of also have the way we end it, which I think is very inspiring, where we raise our goblet of rock exactly. to, to the company or the person or even the app that we think rocks, right? Here it is. There you go. There you go. So um, last time around, I did just dot me, and yep. I did some research recently, and also spoke with the company, and um, you know they're live in Ghana, so I was right. This is you know potentially game-changing sort of idea for uh, for emerging markets, developing markets, but also uh, yep. developed markets. So that was mine, um, and I want to hear about yours. So it's what? Who are you using your goblet of rock to, Rob? Well, I I don't have any. Um this this company I, I think is is much more in, indicative of the industry in North America. It is a <laughs> frivolous tool that I have been immersed in and have lost many hours of productivity this week uh, as a result of this. And it, I think it fits well with some of the themes that Gary was talking about, which was audience development, uh, bandwidth consumption, the issue with LTE and and uh, and uh, and broadband connectivity to the devices, and. Um, Trending and uh, and crowdsourcing and all that kind of stuff, all brought into a mobile device with a little bit of commerce on the back end. It is it is an app called Sound Tracking. I don't know if you've heard of this thing. No, tell, out, tell me about it. It came out in December, um, and uh, it, it's been out uh, for a little while now. But I just mm -hmm. discovered it, and it is quite literally a crowdsourced. Uh, you, you basically tell it what you're listening to, 
and it stores it obviously in the cloud and then it trends around the world the songs that everybody is listening to so you can tell your audience you can tell people what you're listening to and and it's it's absolutely incredible and it's great for one reason is because it's a reminder of the music that's out there and it's not just a local north american uh, phenomenon but what i found about this is that it's very clearly uh you know the number one trending song right now is bob marley jamming wow. right this is a global thing so what it does for me is it always reminds me that there's a whole bunch of middle-aged white guys out there <laughs> and this is the way that they can influence the pop culture and music out there because you know i've seen hall and oats i've seen uh, the eagles uh, i have not seen a lot of springsteen but you get the you get the point is that this is a global community and, and an app like this it's like uh, you know, Instagram for music is the best way that I can do it is that it, it just kind of brings that community together. And the monetization happens as a result of, uh, you know, it, it's an affiliate link through to buying, uh, you know, buying the music from iTunes or, or uh, whatever music service you want. But I love this kind of application because it reminds me that I've got, uh, you know, that, that the world is a much bigger place than the collection that I actually have. And, and I think it ties together that content play that we're talking about with a fire. It ties together uh, Gary's many of Gary's uh, trends that he, he's talked about um, around content and consumption and, and uh, performance and, and uh, certainly uh, bandwidth restrictions and requirements and, uh, and community and commerce. So, uh, you know, soundtracking for what it's worth. I, they get my goblet. Uh, appropriately goblet of rock yeah. and roll the ro <laughs> yeah the goblet of rock with the boss in the, and elvis there you go it's not just about lady gaga rob it isn't there's a world beyond it it isn't we just celebrated elvis's birthday on january 8th uh, so uh, you know it got me inspired to, to look at something like this and uh don't get me started because you will finish the show if I start diving into some of these songs. It's pretty incredible. And you start to remember the the album covers, which was the thing that I think is missing in this music space, right? Is that album cover. Like if I if I just showed you, it's like there, right in the corner is Bob Marley. For people who don't even know what he looks like anymore, yeah. that's the cover of his greatest hits, the legend greatest hits album. And, and some of that was it. iconic. I mean I've got I've got T shirts in storage that, you know, it's just the album cover. I won't go way back to it, but things like Boston, but we will, we'll leave it there. <laughs> exactly. But if you <laughs> want like to the relive that, Rob, I didn't say I'm going to wear it next time. <laughs> well, I think we should. If you want to relive that, go get soundtracking because it's uh, it's been incredible. It's been a, a journey to my youth, and uh, some pretty bad songs. But uh, that's the whole thing. So soundtracking, I raise my goblet of rock to you, good friends. Awesome. Soundtracking. Well, I, you know what? We're done. We're done. And tell us, come on, what's up next? Well, next week. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm very excited about that. Uh, we have Chet and Charmin, who is going to be coming on to this show, talking about the same thing, his trends going forward, uh, what he thinks 2012 is. A different perspective, but my guess is that there's going to be a lot of overlap on this. Um, you know, there's going to be some overlap anyways around these industries, because I don't think that uh, th there's always some outliers, and, and I love that. You know, uh, with Gary's uh, talking about the LTE and the restrictions or the requirements uh, around broadband access to the devices. Um, and I'm really interested to see what uh, Chetan has to say. I've never spoken to him. Very excited about doing that. And then if he can also, what's really cool is he can sort of go across all of his data, his awesome wireless data reports that come out, which are the Bibles yeah, of the industry, incredible. and sort of give us, uh, you know, rather the quarter, 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 give us the whole thing. So I'm looking forward. Yeah, we're going to hammer that guy. And then the week after that, as we said, Kevin Tofel from uh, GigaOM. Um, it will will be on to do the exact same thing, and and I think that both of these guys are are this week at uh, CES. We'll get a good uh, mm -hmm. reflective period as well about what's going on, and what happened at CES, which I don't think is a lot. Um, however, we'll get their perspectives as well. Perfect. So until next week, let us know. Do you like the pulse? We'd love to hear from you. We're gonna go with it. If we don't hear from you, you know, <laughs> your, um, my mother's vote doesn't count. Peggy, your family's vote doesn't count either. Uh, so we're relying on just one vote to say, yeah, we like that. But it's the pulse. We'll see you next week for episode number three. Thanks, Peggy. Got it. <laughs>